You know when you're looking out of a train window and the foreground is going past faster than the background? That's parallax! This is a rostrum. It's used for non-digital 2D animation like cell or cutout. This camera points down at this shelf thing on which you put a series of celluloid sheets or some cardboard cutout characters or whatever. I'm getting to the parallax. This is a multiplane camera. If you're Lottie Reiniger, creating the oldest surviving animated feature film in 1926, use this to mix two completely different styles of animation. I'm getting to the parallax. If you're Ub Iwerks in 1933, you put a few more shelves in and you can put four layers of background paintings. And this version you can adjust the planes in a tiny accurate increment between frames, creating parallax! Look, now I'm Lottie Reiniger's using the multiplane camera for parallax. And if you're William Garrity in 1938, you could patent this for Walt Disney Productions. Now, this is a different kind of drawing. It is a blueprint of a piece of equipment designed to make cartoons more realistic and enjoyable. That's why when you get camera movement in Fleischer Brothers cartoons, rather than parallax, they're building little 3D models for the backgrounds. Look, parallax is a trick. It's not really 3D. It's a trick. Let's leap forward to the early 80s. Look at this beautiful mixture of stop motion and multiplane camera parallax. This is the Polish German animation of the Finnish Moomin books by Tovi Janssen. Oh, and computer games are using this. And the word parallax. Started being used. It wasn't painted to by anyone. So while in early gaming, 3D was rare and kind of difficult, hardware and software developers competed to get the most layers of power in everything. Fast forward to a few years ago. All this is is a series of pungs moving left or right at a constant speed. A pung is an image format with an alpha or transparency layer. So, can we break parallax? Let's start with some layers of forest graphics. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll set the velocities to one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's our base version of parallax. That's working. We're now going to create some variations thereof, like reversing it. Minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five. A minus number means it's going in the other direction in this context. No, 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 that's not the kind of reverse I meant. I meant more like reverse it five, four, three, two, one. Oh, uh, okay, that's odd, but that's, yeah, okay, that's not, I'm not saying it's, oh, I see. Ah, uh, now it makes sense. Okay, 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 I've got one. How about minus four, minus two, one, three, five. Yeah, that, that's still working. We're kind of orbiting, we're kind of able to get that kind of orbiting around effect without having to have the actual rotation in the middle. So we could do this. We could do this just using a series of pungs without having to have like a 3D model or an image sequence to do it. Okay. What about one, two, three, two, one? There's a weird kind of stop-start effect, even though I know each layer is moving at a constant velocity. I'm going to classify that as broken. And how about 5, minus 2, 3, minus 4, 1. Yeah, now that's broken. Yeah, so what's the rule for this? Graph time! Okay, so we've got layer against velocity. So the layer is how high it is. Like we've got various different layers behind each other. And the velocity is the other number I've just been saying. And these are the ones that we've tried. We can see, we can go into positive and negative and mix the two. But we 
can't double back on ourselves. The ones that work essentially are going upwards or downwards, not like some kind of wiggly line, because that stopped making sense. But but do we need parallax when we can just put our tree graphics in a 3D scene and do this? Do we need to impersonate 3D when we have 3D? Well, right now 3D animation is getting really good at pretending to be 2D. And a lot of this actually comes from less tweening. A lot of it also involves distorting itself to break regular rules of 3D. Well, how long should it be before 3D starts looking at how do 2D impersonates 3D so that it can impersonate 2D better by impersonating how 2D does 3D? How can we teach 3D to get perspective a little bit wrong? And will it help to use parallax? Perspective, friends. Bring you the perspective. She is black.